Whenever you have occasion to send a card, remember a Hallmark card will best express your perfect face, your thoughtfulness. The Hallmark Charlotte Greenwood Show. And here she is, that lovable lady of stage, screen, and radio, Charlotte Greenwood. Thank you, Wendell. I know that you are all familiar with the story of the turkey that turned into a Thanksgiving dinner, but our story today has to do with a Thanksgiving dinner that turned into a turkey. I didn't have memories of many Thanksgivings. Yes, especially one. I was playing in vaudeville. The theater was giving away a turkey. When I came out on the stage, somebody in the audience said, My, it's a big one, isn't it? Quite an experience, Mrs. Greenwood. Yes, and it isn't Mrs. Greenwood. It's Miss Greenwood. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) You're sorry. Greenwood has as her special guest today the distinguished actor, one of the stars of Metro Golden Mayor's Weekend at the Waldorf, Mr. Edward Arnold. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Charlotte Greenwood is brought to you this Sunday and every Sunday at this time by the makers of Hallmark Greeting Cards to remind you that whenever you want to remember someone, you'll find a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say the way you want to say it. So when you choose a card... Look on the back for the three identifying words, a Hallmark card. Yes, don't forget, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. Jack and young Robert. It's the day before Thanksgiving, two o'clock in the afternoon. And in the hallway, Aunt Charlotte is calling. Children, I'm leaving to do my shopping now. Okay, Aunt Charlotte. Bye, Aunt Charlotte. Bye, darling. Oh, Aunt Charlotte, wait a second. Hmm? Aunt Charlotte, will you do something for me while you're downtown? Yes, sir. Get me a pair of driving gloves, will you? A guy's hands get pretty cold in an open car. The other night coming home from the dance, I had to drive with one hand. That's dangerous. Yes, it is. I know a young man who ran into a church that way. Bye, Aunt Charlotte. Bye. Oh, Aunt Charlotte. Yes, Barbara. Oh, I'm glad you haven't gone yet. Could you drop into the barn town store and return this golf sweater for me? Oh, you dizzy square. Aunt Charlotte has got to get the stuff for Thanksgiving dinner. Why did you buy that golf sweater if you didn't want it? I did want it. When I got it home, I decided I didn't look good in it. Mm Mm-hmm. Once I bought a golf sweater. Well, how'd you look in it? Like a long approach to a short putt. <laughs> oh, Aunt Charlotte, why do you always say those things? Well, you've got a million dollar figure. Ah, now that's what I call inflation. <laughs> well, where's my shopping list? Aunt Charlotte, oh, yes, yes, yes. we're such a crowd for dinner. Can't we have two turkeys? Why, besides the family, there'll be Gertrude Greenson and Mr. Reynolds and, and Jeff Crawford. Jeff Crawford? Uh, who's Jeff Crawford? A very special friend of mine from Mound City College. Uh, student? No, he plays football. <laughs> plays football, huh? Never heard of him. Well, for your information, he's one of the greatest players Mound City ever had. <laughs> one of the most exciting things in football is to watch one of those long runs for a touchdown. Oh, he's certainly thrilling to watch. But it must be nerve-wracking for the players. Why? Well, do you ever think what it would be like to have 11 men run after you? Do I? <laughs> Yes, he's right here. Aunt Charlotte is still place at the town and country market. Well, why don't you just ask him if you can get two turkeys? Mm-hmm. Hello, Phil. Uh, do you suppose that we could have two turkeys instead of one? Yes, I know turkeys are short. That's why I thought we'd have two short ones instead of one long one. <laughs> oh, but Phil, I put in my order a week ago. All right, I'll come in. We can't get two. We can't even get one. They haven't anything but chickens. 
Well, come on, Frank, Jimmy. Well, I'll have to hurry, even if I'm going to get a chicken. Oh, who wants to latch onto an old chicken anyway? Now, let's not discount our chicken before it's latched. <laughs> oh, but Aunt Charlie. Now, children, I've got to get started. Are you still here, Charlie? Yes, Robert, but I'm leaving right now, dear. Hey. Hey, that's my rain jacket you've got on. You take it off. Oh, I'm not hurting. You take it off. All right, I'm taking it off. Now hurry up. Oh, now, Jack. But he isn't supposed to wear my rain jacket. Well, he's only wearing it for your own good. My own good? To keep your new tie from getting all wet. Oh. <laughs> my new tie. Take my new tie you've got on. <laughs> well, that isn't funny. Now, you get that tie off, too. Why? Oh, you weird. Now, Robert, your brother is right. Now, you shouldn't have taken his things. Well, why don't you wear your own raincoat? I couldn't find it. Anyhow, if I had a jacket like this, I'd let Jack wear it. I'd give him anything I have. I'd give him my automobile if I had one, my gold watch with diamonds on it, for even $10. Would you give Jack your bicycle? Why, you're not fair. You know I've got a bicycle. <laughs> uh, that's exactly the point. Being generous with what you haven't got doesn't count. No. A fellow who's really regular gives you what he has got. Yes, and you being regular, Jack, of course, you'll give Robert the tie. Well, sure. Uh-huh. Well, I mean... Oh, well, exactly when you have another tie exactly like it. Well, yeah, but... You know, Jack, there might be a certain wisdom in not sharing when there isn't enough to share, but the person who won't divide up when there's more than enough, who has two when he only needs one, not only being a little bit stingy, but a little bit short-sighted. He isn't helping the other fellow, and he isn't helping himself, you see that? Yes, sure, but... Okay, Robert, you can have the tie. Can I? Thanks, Jack. Mm, I'm sorry I got sore. Well, I guess I kind of messed up your bureau drawer. Mm-hmm. I'll go and straighten it out. Thanks, I'll help you. Barbara, I'll stop and pay for the chickens, and when they're delivered, will you put them in the refrigerator? No, I don't. Now, I have got to go. Uh-uh, I shouldn't have said that. Good afternoon, Miss Greenwood. Oh, come in, Mr. Reynolds. Hello, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, how do you do? Oh, you're going out, Miss Greenwood? Well, I was just about to do my Thanksgiving shopping. <laughs> I hope you have enough points. I have, but they stick out in the wrong places. <laughs> Can I drive you to the market? No, thanks. It's only a hop, skip, and a jump. <laughs> <laughs> a hop, skip, and a jump? Oh, this scene with you're exaggerating. It's too mild. I am exaggerating. With my legs, it's only a hop and a skip. <laughs> Thanksgiving isn't tomorrow, is it? Mm-hmm. Or is it? You mean you don't know when Thanksgiving is? You haven't been looking forward to it? Well, I have too many important things to think of to bother making a big fuss over Thanksgiving. Well, it's important to give thanks for our blessings. Yes, yeah, it's a pretty sentiment, Miss Greenway. But have, have, you, have you ever looked around the world as it is today and counted your blessings? Oh, yes. I have so many I stop counting and give more time for thanks. Well, that's <laughs> very fine. But you'll have to take a little time out to look over these papers. Yeah. As long as you're going out, I'll leave them with you. We can discuss them some other time. They're the figures on the school lunchbox service. Oh, that's making real progress, isn't it? Oh, definite progress toward bank bankruptcy. Miss Greenwood, why do you put so much food in the lunchbox? Well, can't we be a little generous? Generosity, Miss Greenwood, is an admirable trait for those who can afford it, who can throw money around. The bond in the state can't throw money around. You can't afford to be generous. Oh, Mr. Reynolds, we can't afford not to be generous. Generosity is the soundest investment in the world. Miss Greenwood, your head is way up in the clouds. You're like everybody else. No, I'm different. What do you mean? My feet are on the ground at the same time. (laughs) (laughs) I guess I'm just a grumpy old cynic. You are not, Mr. Reynolds. A cynic is an idealist who's afraid somebody will find it out. (laughs) (laughs) Well, maybe so, Miss Greenwood. I'll see you the first of the week. Aren't you coming to Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I can't make your dinner. Oh, we'll make it. All you have to do is eat it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I can't be here. I have an engagement. Now, there's something I can't make. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Reynolds, you're not going to make it. Well, I'll have to think about it. Oh, Mine's Ricky. Mine's Robert. Your mother and father-in-law? 
home, God and Mother's father, and I've got an aunt and a brother and sisters. They're all away. Yeah? Yeah. I haven't got a father and an aunt or a brother and sisters, but I've got a mother. We live in the country. Yeah? Yeah. We live right here. Talk to the rest of the five of us and we're all at home. That's tomorrow. We're having chicken for dinner. Yeah? Yeah. We never have chicken. Never? Never. Gee, I invite you for dinner when we're having some other company. Oh. He's got any news to give himself? I get a dime for reason to leave. For all these are rakes, but it helps you rake somebody else's. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, come on. Okay. Positively exhausted standing all afternoon on your feet. Oh, I wasn't the only one standing on them. <laughs> oh, I closed the door, Robert. Wait, wait, well, wait just outside bringing some things in from the car. Honestly, oh, no. the crowds are getting worse and worse. I don't see how a person can ever get into a sort of shop. The best way is to be born there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Jack. Um, Barbara, I'm going to introduce and... <laughs> she didn't think she could come to dinner tomorrow because she just remembered she promised to have Thanksgiving dinner with Janet Gregory. <laughs> oh, first Mr. Reynolds backing out and, and all good. Well, that's okay by me. We can handle two chickens. There's only one chicken. Oh, don't be silly. That's true. I put them in the refrigerator myself. Yeah, but I gave one away to a poor boy who never had chicken. Ever. Oh, you did what, Robert? Gave one away. You said when anybody has two things, they should divide up. Oh, good grief. Who did you give us to? To a boy named Dick. Dick who? Dick who? Didn't he have any other name? Of course. Well, what is his other name? Richard. Uh Uh-oh. His last name, Robert. What is it? Where does he live? I don't know his last name. But he lives in the country. Did he tell you what country? Everything about this Thanksgiving's going to turn out all wrong. Yeah, Robert spoiled it all. Now, Robert did what he thought was right, and when you do what you think is right, nothing is going to turn out very wrong. But I wanted a big party. So people think we're important. We'll have nobody. I wanted two turkeys, and we'll have chicken. One chicken. I will just think about one chicken. <laughs> he won't have a chance to think about it. <laughs> Robert gave it away. But, but what about the other one? I bought the other one for Mrs. Talmage next door. This Thursday, Thanksgiving, many of us will visit with dear ones we seldom have a chance to see. It'll be good to renew the old ties and to know that after this happy reunion... There's a way we can keep in touch regularly. Yes, by sending greeting cards. For a thoughtful card is a visit in spirit that we can enjoy not just at Thanksgiving, but all through the busy year. At your Hallmark dealers, you'll find cards that are appropriate for every occasion. Distinctive cards for remembering your family and friends on special days, such as birthdays, wedding days, anniversaries. Cards, too, for every day. Just to say, I'm thinking of you. There are lively Hallmark cards that are clever, humorous cards. Among them, many a gay get-well message to cheer a friend who is ill. You'll always find a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say the way you want to say it. So go to your Hallmark dealers this week. And when you choose your cards, be sure to look on the back for the Hallmark name. Because like sterling on silver, the word Hallmark on the card you buy... Tells your friends you've cared enough to send the very best. Hallmark cards are on display at America's finest stores. Remember, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. <laughs> Quite a state of excitement. For unable to buy a Thanksgiving turkey, Charlotte bought a chicken and then Robert gave it away. It's now Thanksgiving Day and since early morning, Aunt Charlotte has been telephoning every poultry shop in Lakeview, hoping to find one open. She's just about to give up when. Hello? Hello? Oh, thank goodness you're open. 
Uh, have you a turkey? The name is Greenwood. Miss Greenwood. Miss Charlotte Greenwood. Look, I don't want to be introduced to the turkey. I just want to buy it. <laughs> oh, you haven't. I know the Captain Harry would have that. Well, have you a nice chicken? I see. Hello, wait. Have you a duck? A duck? A duck, you know. It's like a chicken only with snowshoes. <laughs> well, thank you anyway. That's a feeling which tells a woman she's right. Oh. Even when she's wrong. Oh. <laughs> now, did you get the oysters for the dressing? No. Nope. Ain't necessary. Huh? Well, what about the cranberries for the cranberry sauce? Ain't necessary. Dressing and cranberry sauce aren't necessary for the turkey? What? Ain't turkey. <laughs> no. What? It isn't turkey? Mm-hmm. All I could get was bologna. <laughs> over for dinner. They were wonderful neighbors. Captain John Smith, Pocahontas. <laughs> oh, well, but anyway, see, there's nothing like a family dinner at uh, Thanksgiving time. I remember when I was a young fellow at home with my family. Thanksgiving had a special significance. And now, when the man's all alone... Uh, you don't start out collecting friends after your forty. No, you don't start out collecting friends at any time. You start out by being one. Uh, at any rate, Miss Green, when I came here to apologize for losing my temper yesterday, well, I was downright rude. I didn't even thank you for inviting me to dinner. Oh, that's all right. I'm sorry that you're leaving for Mound City today and can't accept. Oh, 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 only I'm not leaving for Mound City today. And I do accept. Uh, with the most sincere appreciation of your kindness. Oh, you're staying for dinner? 
Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Greenwood, uh, would a man in his sober senses get on a train for Mound City when he could be here with his delightful family? Would a man give up the chance to enjoy a big fat turkey with cracking brown skin crammed full of stuffing and dripping with juice? If he would, I'd be very much surprised. I think he will be. <laughs> the fact is, Mr. Reynolds, we... Oh, pardon me. Well, Gertrude Gleason, good morning. Oh, good morning, Mr. Reynolds. I think it's just since you this year, you didn't invite me to dinner. I mean, it really is. I mean, it is really. I mean, but Gertrude, you were going to have dinner with Janet Gregory. Oh, I am. That's why I brought her along. Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, I actually did. Yes, you actually did. Well, come in, girls. Uh, good morning, Janet. Good morning, Miss Greenwood. Uh, uh, Mr. Reynolds, the attorney for the Barton Estate. Mr. Reynolds, this is Janet Gregory. Oh, how do you do, counsel? Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, how are you, Miss Janet? Simply super, Mr. Reynolds. Oh, and this is, uh, Dr. Gleason. Oh, hello, Mr. Reynolds. Hello. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Miss Janet, I wonder if are you... Oh, Mr. Reynolds, I'll just adore lawyers. Yes. Now, as I was saying, Miss Janet, Don't hesitate to ask, Mr. Counselor. <laughs> 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 I saw you in court the other day, and I mean, it was really simply the way you said all those wonderful things to the jury. I mean, they were positively dumbfounded. And I'm sure if they knew what you were saying, they would have brought in a verdict of not so guilty. <laughs> I never need any help. Oh, Come on, Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds likes to be alone with Mr. Reynolds. <laughs> it's written all over his face what he'd do if he were alone with me on a desert island. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, what would I do? He'd stand on my shoulders and look for a ship. <laughs> Oh, I forgot. The bad truth is I'm getting tired. You know, I'll feel better after I sample that turkey. Well, the truth is, Mr. Reynolds, over the door. Hi, I'm Jeff Crawford. Hey, I'll bet my last dollar you're Barbara's Aunt Charlotte. Well, son, you've been saved from financial ruin. That's right, I'm Miss Greenwood, Barbara's aunt. Sure, anybody could tell. Man would only want one look at you. That's all he can take. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Reynolds, uh, this is Mr. Crawford. Jeff is the captain of the Mound City football team. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, how do you do? Hey, wait a minute now. Just a minute. Just wait a moment. Don't you know your own strength? Sure. Here, yeah, I was going out with Thompson. Well, I really don't follow football teams. Here, I'll tell you. Okay, now you got the pig skin. Pig skin? What's a pig skin for? Well, to hold the pig together. <laughs> Oh, that's 
can't be anybody else. It just can't be. I'll go. Well, come on. We might as well all go. How do you do? I'm Mrs. Gresham. Yes. I'm not sure whether this is the right place or not, but uh, have you a nephew named Robert? Yes, I am. That's me. Well, you beat my little boy Richard a chicken yesterday. Oh, the Greenwood. So that's what happened. Well, I've heard of people being generous to a fault, but in this family, it amounts to a felony. Oh, I know. Richard couldn't have taken it. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Gresham. You just keep the chicken. You you might as well. After all, with the family, there are ten of us here. And what's one chicken divided by ten? I know that one. So do I, Smarty (laughs) Sam. Oh, but you don't understand. My my son must have given Robert the wrong impression. It isn't that we're hungry. You see, I have a large farm just south of here. We raise nothing but turkeys. Of course, the Gresham turkey farm. <laughs> and when Richard told me you were having company on Thanksgiving and serving chicken, well, I thought perhaps it's because you couldn't get the turkey. I understand you can't get them for love and the money. Well, I only tried money. <laughs> And in return for your generosity, yeah. I brought you a couple of... A turkeys. couple of turkeys? You mean you... They're brought... all cooked. Round to a turn and ready to serve. I have them out the car. Oh, that's, that's awfully nice of you. <laughs> nice. Yes, it's very nice. Now, go get them. Children, let them help Mrs. Gresham. Oh, oh. oh. And it looks Miss Greenwood well. What I said about generosity not paying off, I, I mean, I'm going to have to eat my words. Eat words when there's turkey? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a life thing this was that that woman had her own turkey farm. And that's what I'm going to have myself a turkey farm. My father used to raise turkeys. He did? Mm-hmm. Out of the whole bunch, I was the only one that turned out to be a hen. <laughs> Identifying words, a Hallmark card. H A L L M A R K. A Hallmark card. Like sterling on silver, those three words are your assurance of finest quality. They tell your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Yes, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. And our Charlotte Greenwood. Friends. I know we all have often thought Thanksgiving is more than food. It's time set by to give to God our prayers of gratitude. But what Thanksgiving also means, I realize more each year, is that we share the best we have with those we hold most dear. For to our feet, we ask old friends and recent ones as well. And as we dine, we hear the news that each one has to tell. We hear each one's accomplishment, his hope, or his success. And in the spirit of the day, we share his happiness. Now, wouldn't it be sensible if we could keep that mood and share those joys throughout the year, not just with one day's food? There is a way to share with friends, no matter how remote, and you can do it any day. Just send a card or note. And now until next Sunday at the very same time, this is Charlotte Dean with me.